Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and well, I guess it's that time of the week. Um, as you can see from the title, um, I up. and uh, this video is pretty tough for me to make, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I just put it on record, and I'm just going to let it roll. And uh, yeah. I lost $100,000 short in GME. I mean, I honestly thought I got in good. Uh, I got in right around the $33, $34 area uh, a couple weeks back. Kind of, you know, unfortunately for me, you know, right before it exploded. And um, anyway, um, I, ju I just didn't see this happening. I mean, it just blew right through my stop loss and it just kept going against me and and um, yesterday was just I thought I'm gonna ride this thing through I'm gonna see it out you know what I mean I'm not gonna let them get to me you know what I mean kinda like uh, people uh, months or a couple of years back with Tilray um, you know they uh, they saw it go up to 300 and then it came all the way back down to 10 and I'm like I'm just I'm not gonna let that happen to me and um, I know, I know, I know. I preach, take your stop losses, always use a stop market. Well, I happen to put a stop limit order in on this. And uh, it, I mean, you guys, have, for those of you watching GME over the last couple of days, you've seen it. I mean, the thing is insane. It's wild. It's crazy. I thought, you know, having like a $3 stop limit order to be in, it just blew right through. It got halted, gapped up over it, uh, and that was it. And then I panicked, and it just it kept going against me and against me and against me. And I just, I, I panicked. And, um, I mean, for all the things that I teach you guys, all the lessons that, you know, um, you learn from me, take your stop losses. I mean, money management's the number one, number one thing to learn. And I'm looking over here and it's like, this thing's still going off. It's at $221. And I just, I finally just, once it hit, once it broke 200, that was it. That was my, that was my pain point, my threshold point. And I just... I, mean, I don't know if you can see, I got bags under my eyes. I haven't shaved in, in days. Uh, I'm having a hard time sleeping. It's just been, like I'm sitting here in disbelief. And like I said, it's, I can't, uh, I just, just put it on record and just let it roll. You know what I mean? I, I, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this video. And part of me is just embarrassed by it, um, to be honest with you. It's just, uh, just embarrassing. You know what I mean? Because it goes against everything I stand for as a trader. You know, and, uh, you know, I guess we all mess up once in a while. And this one cost me $111,000. And uh, I got a margin call on it this morning. I just thought, all right, that's it, you know. Um, by the end of the day, and I just, yeah, I, I don't even really want to talk about it. I just wanted to kind of just, just uh, tell you guys I'm just kidding. Are you freaking kidding me, man? <sighs> Why in the world would you ever take a trade without using a freaking stop loss? What is the matter with you people? I don't care if you're long. I don't care if you're short. That's the dumbest thing you could ever do. I don't care if this whole GME thing started with Reddit users. It doesn't matter how it started. The fact that people out there are losing tens, hundreds, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars on this is ridiculous. You guys, I don't know if I had you there. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? But come on, you gotta be smarter than that. One of the biggest reasons is this industry has such a crappy name is because people are gamblers. All they're doing is trying to get rich quick. Well, get rich quick is the fastest way to the poor house possible. And GME has proven that over the last couple weeks, all right? The last two days have been insane. If you thought yesterday was nuts when it peaked at 160 and then went all the way down to 60 bucks, something like that, well, today was even crazier. It looked like it, was, it wasn't gonna do much. And then all of a sudden it shot up, went ridiculous. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's crazy. And then post-market, this thing just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. And now it's up over uh, $220, $230, something like that. Guys, come on, man. So I'm gonna take a quick look uh, at the GME chart with you guys, but I hope you guys are learning from other people's mistakes. You don't want to be on Wall Street bets. You don't want to be going YOLO, you only live once, right? 
You don't want to be a part of any of that. That's not what good trading is all about. I've been watching some YouTube videos uh, about some high frequency traders and this telling people technical analysis is garbage and it doesn't work. No, that's garbage. What doesn't work is people that have terrible money management and people that don't use stop losses. Okay, I mean, guys, be smart, man. So again, let's go in here, let's take a quick look at the GME chart and see where people went wrong, what happened, okay? Again, we could sit here and talk all day long that this started with Reddit users, okay? And again, maybe it started that way, but hedge funds got caught in this, market makers got caught in this, lots of people that were short the stock got caught in this, and, and to be fair, to be clear, it's a garbage stock. They lost 471 million dollars last year. It's a junk garbage stock and I bet you the brand new CEO right now, the only thing he's thinking about is when can I get out of my shares? It's 200, 220 dollars a share. When can I get out please? Why? Because he knows it's a garbage company too. It's just garbage. GameStop is junk, okay? Still doesn't mean you shouldn't take a stop loss, okay? Stop trying to get rich quick. Stop it. it very, very few people do that. I did see a guy said he made millions of dollars on GME, but for every one of him, there's 10,000 people that got broke off of it, okay? So don't be that person, all right? So let's get to it, guys. Let's take a quick look at some of the charts and we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so I said we were gonna come here and take a look at the GME chart. We're gonna take a look at the monthly chart. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the weekly chart, the daily chart. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. Uh, I just want you guys to see what, uh, what shenanigans look like, what an ugly chart looks like. And, and to be clear, okay, as we get into this, I'm not trying to suggest that hedge funds were wrong to short GME. I think they were actually correct. I mean, if you take a look at the chart, I mean, the stock has gone down quite a bit. It had a little double top and it went lower. But one of the things you have to appreciate and understand is that hedge funds are big, most of them, okay? And they can't just get out of a, a, a position with the click of a button like you or I can, oh, I have 500 shares, I have 5,000 shares. They can't do that, okay? So for a lot of these folks to get out of a position like GME, they, they may have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of shares, and they have to work the order, work the position, and it takes longer to do that. So something like this can catch up on people really quickly. It can happen in a day or two or three and put hedge funds in a really, really bad spot, okay? And before you go, ah, F those hedge funds, Realize this, hedge fund managers are gonna walk away rich because they came in rich, all right? And they don't have all that much of their own personal money in these funds. Some, some of them do, but a lot of them don't. The, the thing is, is that it's average investors that are investing in these hedge funds. They're the ones that are gonna really get hurt and spanked. So I feel bad for those folks. They made a poor decision to choose that hedge fund and that hedge fund made a really bad decision. So if we see some of these hedge funds like the one on the screen here, for example, um, potentially losing $13 billion, potentially. I don't know if all that's true, but if they do, my goodness, guys, do you know how many people's money they just lost? How many retirement accounts they just lost? And it's not all just rich people. It's average people too sometimes. So if, if some of these hedge funds do go bust, it's bad for a lot of people, thousands of people. So don't just look at it, oh, the hedge fund manager deserves this. A lot of people are gonna lose a lot of money. So anyway, so if we take a look at the monthly chart here of GME. So stock opens, you know, some 20 years ago, give or take it. It works its way up to $60. You know, back when online streaming was not a popular thing, and it, it bounced pretty heavily and it looked like a good investment at that time. And then it got hammered in the financial crisis took many, many years, four or five years where it went sideways, bounced up here. Here's your little double top, okay? And then chops, chops, and starts going lower and lower. And this is where you start to see, you know, maybe these hedge funds weren't so foolish, they weren't so dumb, because once we get under this threshold right here of about $15, right? You have support here, support here, support here, and support here. Once you get under this threshold of $15 over here, okay? This is a good short. And then you have this monthly breakdown right in this range of 1220. This is a really good short opportunity, guys. And it was that way for six or seven months. This was a great stock to short. It went from 15 down to $3, guys. 15 to three. That's an unbelievably good short play. And I'm sure some funds got out of it and made a lot of money. Then it chops around and didn't do a whole lot for about a year, year and a half. And then, boom. July, August of 2020 happens. The stock was sitting around 377. 
And then a month later, it was at $7. Like, oh, okay, whatever. It's been in this range for quite a while, right? Three to $7 range. Then the next month, it's at 11. And then the next month, it's at 15. And then the next month, it's at 19. And then the next month, it's at 22. And then this happens. January of 2021. Stock goes from $17 to $159. But it doesn't stop there. Let's take a look. This happens to be the 60-minute post-market chart tonight. I'm doing this video in the evening tonight. And what do we have going on? A stock that yesterday, as we saw, went to 159, came all the way back to 60 and ended the day around 80. Well, today, it went from 80-ish all the way up to $250, all right? And this is real-time live charts right here. And we can see, we'll move this to a five-minute. Wow. Okay, just wow. This is, the, this is the normal trading day that you're seeing right here. And then all this, see this dotted line to the right? This is all post-market trading. So the stock closed the day, right? At 4 p.m., it closed at 145.97 and then went all the way up and peaked at 248.90. Chopping around. Guys, this stock could gap up to 260, 270, 290 tomorrow. Now, what's the point in me going through these charts with you? It's to show you that, yes, some of these hedge funds and other folks were smart to short GME at $15 and take this thing down to $3, okay? Where they weren't smart, though, is to have a stop loss in that position. And now you can see in a matter of what, a few days? A few days, this stock went from 17 to basically 250, okay? Now, if you want to talk about fundamentals, and I don't do fundamentals, this is a garbage junk stock, guys. I mean, let's take a look here, okay? Look at these right here. GameStop net income minus 274 million for the last quarter, not for the year, for the last quarter. Let's take a look here, okay? This quarter, they lost 274 million. The quarter previously, they lost 339 million. The previous quarter to that, they lost $643 million. So last year, this company lost collectively over a billion dollars in net income. Yes, with a B, okay? A billion dollars. All right, and here's the difference. Tesla, crazy, 1,701 price to earnings. Insane off the charts, overvalued tremendously. But they have a bright future. GameStop does not have a bright future. Okay, this is a company that was profitable, that used to be profitable. We can see that here in their net income. From 2008 to 2012, they made money. Then from 2012 to 13, they lost money. And then from 2013, all the way, all the way, all the way up to 2018, they made money. Not a lot, but they made money. Then it got nasty. I mean, look at this loss. 591 million, that's one quarter, that's three months they lost that kind of money. 694,000, they lost. I mean, guys, this is a garbage junk stock. So for people to short it is a, is a smart thing, but to do it without a stop loss is crazy. Now, I understand with the hoopla, there were some people that made money. I mean, this person made $13 million on a $50,000 investment. But here's the kicker. This person apparently, and I don't know because I don't follow Reddit and Wall Street bets, they were up $25 million at one point. They even gave back half their profits. Okay, so I don't subscribe to this get rich quick stuff, guys. This is how you get broke. This is how you get poor. Okay, all these people in here, Wall Street bets, you only live once, YOLO, blah, 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 blah. I mean, guys, Come on, man. If you want to build wealth, you do it slowly, okay? If you want to build wealth, you do it slowly, okay? So don't get into stocks like GME. These penny stock gurus out there trying to pump and dump. Stop. Stop with the shenanigans. Don't do that stuff, all right? So I hope you learned a little bit in this video about taking your stop losses. This is really serious, serious stuff. People can absolutely destroy an entire account in one day. The stock goes from 80 to 160 right there. Guys, this is a five minute chart. So just do this, do me this before we, before we stop. Right here, this was yesterday at 10.15 a.m. at $88. 10.15, by 10.50, 35 minutes later, this stock was up to 160. Now, I'm not saying don't buy it, don't short it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't do it without a stop loss. And if you're going to do it, recognize the volatility. What we have, though, are a lot of new traders that don't know what they're doing, trying to trade stocks like GME because they're like, well, 
I only have a $3,000 account. I need $25,000 to trade. So they put all or nothing into a stock. It's their life savings, it's only three grand, but it's a lot of money to them, gone. Other people with half a million dollars, gone, okay? And then they think, oh, you know, this, it, it can't do that. There's no way GME can go past 160. Well, today it's at 250. Tomorrow it could be at 500. It's not unrealistic to say that. Do you know how many people went bust and broke on this? Lots of hedge funds, lots of money managers, lots of everyday people. Is it really worth it? It's not worth it, okay? So be smart. Money management is your number one job. I don't care what business you are in, managing your money is your number one job, all right? So again, I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again next week.